All right. This one's going to be a little different. Um, a lot of you guys said you wanted me to react to um, Ren's 1 million subscriber speech. So um, I'm here to do it. A lot of you have said like, oh, you should you should reach out to Ren. You guys seem very similar in, in this and that. And so I, I don't really know that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But um, I'm here to do the reaction. So uh, let's check it out. The short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um, first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is a flipping huge milestone. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or have been here for a while. I wanted to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thanks. Hey, man. I think I was a little late to the party, but you're welcome. You're welcome. Wow. That's crazy that he shouted out reactors. Let's keep going. Action community who have gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this, this, this passage that I wrote about success. It's too much for me to remember right now. So bear with me, but yeah. Success to me means that I have a responsibility that transcends me. If I have a platform where people are paying attention, then I feel like it's my duty to make that count. It's far more important than my aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've never seen an interview of Ren. Um, this is my first, I mean, really seeing him talk. Let's, let's keep going here a little bit. Aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me. And that makes me feel very rich. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life, which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. Mm. The thing that has by far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations which brought me the most joy. Wow. Pre yeah, that's an important thing that um, a lot of people who people don't necessarily think about uh, the amount of pain that goes into art. Um, I mean, some of the most beautiful, I mean, like, uh, I mean, <laughs> you could go down the list of artists who have overdosed or, or you know, uh, taken their own lives and whatnot um, and, and have also created some of the best music ever. Um, Wow. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit speechless, but um, yeah, I, I mean, let's, let's keep going. In art, which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark, justifies my own pain. And I desperately needed that to be justified. Hmm. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems, I was severely underweight all my meals had to be restricted and blended, and I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't wow. socialize, I couldn't watch films, I couldn't read, my bones constantly hurt, even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. And this went on for years, with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good. But Guys, I, I have to say, I, I literally have, well, I. I don't want to put it up there because there's some stuff about people on there. I literally have a piece of paper um, right here labeled negative reinforcement. People talk about positive reinforcement. I get drive from looking back at the times that I was bullied, made fun of, dismissed. Um, you know, I, I achieved something and then people still pointed out the thing that I, I didn't do that great on or whatever it was. Um, I mean, I, I live what uh, Ren's talking about here and um, I've started to look at uh, some really successful people not all of them but some of them have have terrible upbringings um, terrible backstories and they're some of the strongest um, most most powerful speakers and communicators um, and f for me it's like 
pain is is definitely a source of fuel you know it's i i said this in i want to say it was seven sins i said pain isn't isn't a good or bad thing it's a thing it's a source it's a source that will either corrupt your your mind your brain and your life or it's going to be something that's going to propel you on to the next challenge. Um, it's And it's very difficult to transform that pain into power um, and fuel uh, for motivation because oftentimes the pain is is um, when we feel, you know, the painful experience is usually an experience where we feel less than, where we feel terrible, where we, you know, we were put through something that um, was debilitating. I mean, you know, what he's talking about right now. So... Uh, let, let's keep going here a little bit with it, guys. Time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good because it felt insidious. Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. But I'm here to tell you that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are, hmm. you won't hurt forever. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you. Because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become mm. very capable of wielding the light. Guys, I, I, I could not agree more here. I mean, th this is how I this is kind of how I live my life. I read the negative comments and I use it as fuel. I've said a lot of stupid things on the channel. So uh, a lot of times people take what I say out of context or they focus on one specific aspect and I'll focus on some of those comments not to, to degrade myself or, or get myself worked up. But it's like, OK, so this person said, oh, this is a terrible reaction. You missed this, 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 this and this or, you know, you just missed this one. Like it was a great reaction that I did. And then they focus on like one line that I missed. And I'm like, really? Um, so, Wow. This is powerful, man. I mean, he could have used this million subscriber uh, thing to do anything. And instead, he's he's talking about becoming one with the darkness. Um, something something I think about when I'm when I'm scared um, or, or I'm doubtful. Um, I think about the things that I've gone through in my childhood um, and, and adult life. Um, and I frame it in a way of look at what I've lived through. Look at what I've already made it through. If I can survive that, then I can sh sure as shit thrive in this scenario. So th th thank you guys for pointing me to this. Um, I wasn't really sure what I'd be getting here, but um, I, I'm, I want to keep going. Stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you. Because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You can be ferocious and you could be magnificent. For the medical industry who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. For the people living in the light who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, hmm. ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must... Con Guys, if you lie and you get away with it, you might think you're cheating the system. You might think you found a way around doing what, what was difficult, meaning telling the truth and being genuine. At the end of the day, you're gaming yourself because you have to live with what you do. I mean, it, with me in the channel, if I make a video and I completely fake it, like I've talked about it, I've listened to most of Eminem's old discography. I've heard his his beef with MGK. I've heard all of his beefs. Um, I haven't heard some of his new stuff. I could fake so many reactions and quit my job overnight. At the end of the day, I have to look at myself in the mirror. I mean, I'm, I'm raising a five-year-old girl. 
How can I how can I look her in the eyes and say, hey, it's not OK to lie to us if I'm out lying to the entire world? Um, you know, th that's maybe slightly different than what he's talking about. But at the end of the day, it comes down to how can I'm not I'm not one of those people who can go around tongue in cheek and and just deceive like I don't have that Mark Zuckerberg like <laughs> that like psychopathic gene in me. Um, you know, I've built up self-respect by um, a, a few different routes. Self-discipline is the best way for me to build self-respect. But part of self-discipline is being honest with myself. And if I'm honest with myself, I'm honest with others. And it doesn't make me a lot of friends, guys. You got to understand, to be honest with people, especially, I don't know what things are like wherever you're watching this from, but in the U.S., in my generation, if you call a friend out for like, hey, like we were out at the bar or whatever, and like you, you totally like were throwing, you know, these little comments in about that, that uh, guy or whatever. And, you know, he was down on his luck. Like you were kind of bullying him. Like if, if you, if you throw away all the bullshit and you call somebody out or like, let's just say someone dr is, is they went through a breakup and they're drinking a lot. You, you come to them out of love, of course. And you say, look, man, you know, I, I really love you. Um, man, woman, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I, I really respect you. I love you as, as an individual, but you know, I think, I think this isn't good for you. Um, oftentimes to, to hold peop other people accountable and be honest about like some, like someone will ask me a question and I'm like, man, they're not going to like the answer to this. I, I won't rant on, um, too much here, but this be, I think I, I see why you guys told me to check this out. Cause you guys have watched my reactions. Um, you guys have seen kind of my mentality, the way I talk about things, the way I think about things. I'm not perfect. I say stupid things. Um, I'm still getting used to filming myself and recording myself and putting it out to the world. So I appreciate you guys' patience with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's, all about being genuine for me. Let's go, guys. And the world around us, ultimately hurting us. I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it. It's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, mm -hmm. ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity, and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority, priority number one. If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger, or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it, feel it, understand yeah. it, express it, and then let it go. Because the worst thing you can do is dismiss your own emotions. Okay, just oh, now I'll say this. Just because you feel a certain way does not make you right. But I, what he's probably about to go into is if you feel a certain way, figure out, sit with it. If you've gotten in anger, if you if you have a problem with somebody else, sit with it. Figure out what the problem really is in your own mind and then address it. Let's Let's see what he's got to say. Be with it. Feel it understand it express it and then let it go you're hurting mm. give yourself love forgive yourself and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass we have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell towards Jana or Jahannam, utopia or dystopia and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell so tread carefully but treat those differences with respect Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety and the sum of their parts. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I wow. love you. You guys said um, he does quite a few different interviews. Um, so he he essentially said, sit with it, process it, and um, you know, more or less, at a certain point, you have to let go of it. Um, that's the conclusion I come to with a lot of things. Um, I mean, there's stuff that happens every other day, sometimes every day, 
in my life where um, I have to sit with it because um, I my problem is I'll get fixated on things. So I have to either sit with it or I have to make it right in my head. And more of, often than not, um, the best way to make something right in my head is is to reach a conclusion. Well, it comes down to like what can you control? Um, and if you think about what you control, it's, it's really very little. Um, well... I've got family. Speaking of not being able to control things, I've got family back, so I'm going to wrap this one up. You guys take care.